Hi, my name's Mark with Wright Products, and this is our second instructional video on how to construct uh, roof flashings. Both of these videos are, are addressing how to flash walls where they project up through a shingle roof, wall, walls and wall corners. Some of the more common examples that you, that you have to roof around are, are a fireplace chimney, for one. Another one would be like a dormer wall where a dormer comes up out of the roof and it's got its own roof on top of that, of course, or maybe even just a bigger two-story wall with a, with a roof on top of it. It would be three of the common, common samples of walls and wall corners coming up through a roof. Our first video, we built a sample section of roof with a fireplace on it, and we've installed the the base flashing around the bottom of the of the fireplace. That's our first video. This is really a, a two-part system. You have the base flashing and then you have the counter flashing. This video is going to be devoted and we're going to show a step-by-step -step process of putting a counter flashing around this fireplace chimney. But, but first I'd like to talk a little bit about wood frame walls that come up through a roof. A lot of times that's what you got to deal with is a dormer or a two-story wall and you need to flash that wall face and, and in, the, in the corner and, and up the side of the wall. And on, on wood frame walls, basically your, your counter flashing is, is your siding or whatever you use for wall covering. Uh, the job of the counter flashing is to get any water that, that's trying to run down the face of this wall out on top of the base flashing. Uh, the base flashing and the shingles, you know, take it from there. So. The counter flashing, we just want to try and make sure no water gets in behind this counter flashing and, and all the water gets out on top of our, our base flashing. Unfortunately, it, it doesn't, sometimes doesn't take very much water getting in and, uh, and you'll have a spot on a ceiling where you've got a stain in the ceiling and, and uh, so you got to get, you got to get these sealed up good. There's a, there's a lot of ways that siding can leak on a wall like this, letting in, you know, enough water to give us some trouble. Uh, usually it's from wind driven rain, you know, a lot of times a characteristic when you're trying to troubleshoot a, uh, a flashing leak, it, uh, uh, counter flashing leak will, win, will leak only when the wind's from one direction or maybe a heavy rain. That's a clue that, you know, a little bit of water is getting in your, in your counter flashing. And I, I want to describe a couple ways I've seen these leak over the years, you know, vinyl or wood siding. You know, it can develop loose knots or crack, and water can get in around corner boards and trim details. Water can also get around, you know, where your siding would butt up to like a dormer window. Another thing I've seen happen with, with siding a lot of times is water's coming down this roof and it'll hit on top of this piece of siding and track back up here and get on, get on top of your base flashing. And uh, then once it's, once it's up over your base flashing, of course, then, then it's in the it's in the house. Uh, vinyl siding is, you know, some of the same problems. You don't have knots or usually cracks, obviously, but, but with vinyl siding, they'll put a J channel on the roof. Uh, they'll have a J channel in a corner that sticks out here an inch that water's, that water's coming down and hitting, you know, when it's raining hard. And uh, a vinyl siding also has a hook and latch system in it that water can get in that and here again, you know, track back back along the bottom or the top of your vinyl siding. So uh, another thing that gets, that covers these a lot of times is, is uh, cultured stone or they're using thin brick or, or thin cut stone, which all kind of goes on the same as cultured stone. You, you, you have a thin set of mortar and mortar permeates water, you know, on a, on a, a, a prolonged rain where it's been raining for a long time that mortar gets soaking wet and you know it's easier on that even happens on a full a full bed depth of a full brick but when you've got a a thin masonry face like a cultured stone it doesn't take a long time and water's going through that mortar bed and it's in behind your stone so the good the good news about all this is it's, it's easy to fix. I mean, it, what, what you need to do is, is put a house wrap, house wrap on your wall, and, and you can use tar paper or some other kind of roofing material, but I like to use house wrap. It's big pieces, it's easy to put on. Anytime we have a wall that's up above a roof, I'm gonna put house wrap on it. And you wanna do a good job of it. If this is a dormer and there's a dormer window in there, you wanna, you wanna use sealing tape along the sides of your windows. You wanna make sure there's no holes in it. And you want to get it down here so it's obviously down here on top of your 
base flashing. Now all those goofy things that can happen with, with some water getting in behind your siding. A lot of times it's not a lot, but if it gets in behind your siding now, it's still out on top of the house wrap. The house wrap's going get it, to get it out on top of your base flashing. So anytime you have a wood frame wall, that's, that's just a good solution. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take care of a lot of the problems that we've seen develop over the years. When it comes to a, a masonry fireplace that's got a full full brick fireplace, you, you know, house wrap can't save us now. We've got to figure out another way to get this water that's coming down the brick, you know, out on top of our base flashing. So we're going we're gonna to demonstrate that now with, with uh, showing how we put counter flashing on this, this fireplace. To start with, we're going to cut a, we're going to cut a groove about an inch deep with a masonry saw blade into into the brick. I like to come up about five and a half inches and and cut that line along the side of the fireplace. Sometimes I'll rip rip a piece of lumber you know, the, the size that I want it and uh, use that for a guide and then run my my grinder along there to to make that cut up the slope of the roof. But uh, I'll usually mark the the sides of the roof First, and then I'll put a straight edge across here and connect the connect the two side cuts. And up at the top, basically, we got we got to do that all the way around the, the fireplace. Sometimes the masons will put this counter flashing in for you, and they'll stair step it. They'll mortar it right into the brick when they're laying the brick, and they'll stair step that counter flashing back in their mortar and down alongside the brick, and then then you won't have to saw it. Uh, sometimes if you've got a real irregular stone too, that's about the only way you can do it. They'll lay block up through the roof, flash the block, and then take off with their stone. Their stone's sometimes so irregular that you can't really saw a stone and make this system work. But the one we're going to demonstrate is going to, we're going to install the counter flashing in this saw cut. We're going to start, start at the bottom of the fireplace and put this piece on across the front here first. Now, here's, here's the material that I... I made up to use for the counter flashing. Now I bent this with a siding brake and I got a, a kick on that goes on the fireplace like this. There's a there's a hook with a lip on it here that goes in that saw cut. It comes down the face of the fireplace and I put this little kick on the bottom. That's not necessary but it helps make this bottom stay straight and uh, makes a little neater looking job. This hook comes up and it goes in about three quarters and then it's got a, a bend around it here about three-eighths of an inch and uh, when I tap that in the the saw cut in the fireplace chimney it's going to lock the top of that flashing in place and hold it in place there. Now if, if you don't have a break or you don't have someone that can bend that up for you you know you can just with a straight edge you can just make a simple L piece of flashing and put that in the in the uh, saw cut, but you know it's a little harder. I mean, you could, you're going to we're going to seal this saw cut up with a with a good quality caulk. But the the other piece I've got it's a little harder. You can see if any water would hit this lip and try and get past our caulk, then it's got to get up and it's got to get around this the top of this hook to get in behind our flashing. So so I like this better, but uh, that that's this is a possible option that, that you can use uh, for material. One of the other things I like to do before I put, put this first piece on here is I'm going to get my sealing tape out here. And I like to, I like to put a piece of sealing tape on this, this base flashing here. And uh, what I like to do with that is I like to get it right up to the bottom of our saw cut. And I'll put it on here like that. outside corner right up to the bottom of our saw cut. I've cut cut a piece of our counter flashing material here and I, I cut it basically to go by the corner an inch and uh, then I, I'm going to bend that one inch of that counter flashing around the corner so to do that, I have to I have to notch this bottom kick off of here, and I put a I put a 
small cut in here, about three quarters. This lines up to where I'm going to bend it. And I also took the hook flange off uh, uh, back about another three quarter inch because I, I'm going to run that next piece over the top of that. So um, then I want to try and bend this. I'm going to use a, just lay a straight edge on there and bend that up. Go around the corner. On our demonstration here, we've used all aluminum components when we assembled this flashing, and you need to be a little careful here. Sometimes you'll see some copper or galvanized steel that's used for roof flashings, and you don't you don't want to mix the three metals. Uh, they're they're not compatible, and it can cause some corrosion to start and and ruin the lifespan of your flashing. So if you if you start building one of these out of aluminum, you want to use all aluminum or or, or whatever metal you you start with. We recently started making our corner flashing shingles out of copper, so they are available if you have a project that you need some copper ones for. And that's gonna, that basically holds this on there for us. We don't have to really put any fasteners or, or anything on there. Uh, I'm going to bend this little tab down. You could, you could, I think I'll just cut that off. Now here again, I like to take a, a piece of sealing tape here now on just this one inch flange before we put our, our next piece on there and uh, put it on top of that one inch flange <coughs> and cut the bottom of it, kind of to go with the roof here. And I'm going to stick that right on that one inch flange I've been around there like that and uh, you know that's running right up to that up to our saw groove and our and our brick right away and then we're ready we're ready to to put our next piece on up the side here I'm going to hold this side piece of counter flashing just kind of hold it up there where it needs to go and mark that corner and come up on top here right away and mark the wall on the back side of it there for the length and uh, I'm going to just cut this off a straight cut. Now here again, I'm going to cut this an inch long and we'll end up bending the flange over again, you know, around the top corner. So I got this piece cut to length here. It's basically just going to stop flush with the corner. And I notched it like we did the first piece, so there's about a one inch lip that's going to go around, around the top up there. And you want to get that through started lined up and started and we're going to tap that in with a little block again. Now we're ready, we're ready now to put our top piece up, up along the saddle and uh, I'm going to cut another piece of sealing tape here and uh, I like to put it right on that like we did before right up underneath the saw cut and, and onto that one inch flange on this piece coming up from the bottom that also kind of holds it over there And then I'll just hold, hold this next piece up here and, and kind of use the, the wall to mark it. I'm going to mark it here for that cut. And then I'll <clears throat> mark the, the center of the 
the ridge here. Now we're not going to show coming up the other side, but you'd come up the other side and have a piece that would that would lap over this one then coming up when you when you come up the other side. Now this is the last last piece we're gonna put on for our demonstration. We've got it cut to fit here. Get it started in our our cut in our brick. Now the next the next piece would come up and lap across this one to finish that seam, and then you need a then you need to put a good good quality caulk in this this joint. You know the the hook situation that we've got there is going to help, but uh, you need to try and seal this saw cut so any water here again we we're relying on this saw cut to get it out. And you want to put something on there that's hopefully going to last a long time. It's not going to just crack in a few years. I've had good luck with this OSI quad seal, and it's their window and siding caulk. You can get it different colors, too, to match your trim coil. I've had some good luck with some GeoCell products also, but you need a, you need a caulk, caulk along this joint. Don't really, the way I put that sealing tape in there, you know, if a little water would come down here on this corner, it's it's still going to be on top of the ceiling tape. You can caulk you can caulk this joint in this corner, but you maybe wouldn't have to caulk down along the side and along the front. Now, the other thing that can happen on a true masonry fireplace that can get you in trouble, and a lot a lot of you guys are re-roofing something. This fireplace has got some age on it. If there's you're relying on this brick not to leak, you know, kind of like before when we relied on the siding not to leak. I was telling you all the different things, the ways it can leak. Well, unfortunately, this brick can leak too, but you can't, you don't have the advantage of being able to put house wrap on behind bricks. So the brick's got to be in pretty good shape. If the mortar joints are all crumbled and broke up. That's not going to work. You're going to have to get a mason out there to, to remortar the joints. Uh, a lot of times they have a masonry cap. If those are broke, or cracked, you know, you can get some water in behind your brick. So you got you want to take a, a good look at the brick too. You're relying on it to get it this far, and then we got to get it out uh, onto this flashing detail. One thing that we like to do, and it makes your brick, or we do that on cultured stone or or brick or, or stone stone, is there's some good masonry water repellent or water waterproofing stuff that you can spray on. And we go up above the roof, and if we got cultured stone or, or even brick, we'll spray that waterproofing on there. That'll help make your brick last longer, and also help uh, keep any water from, that'll stop water from trying to weep through your, weep through your mortar bed and get in behind your flashing. So that's, that's the end of our, our second video. I, I hope it was useful to you, and, and thanks for, for taking a look at it.